Welcome to our fifth and final video in our series on photosynthesis. In this video, we're going to look at alternative pathways of carbon fixation, the C4 and CAM plants. Before looking at alternative pathways of carbon fixation, let's remind ourselves how carbon was fixed during the Calvin cycle. In the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide was picked up by a molecule called RUBP. And when they combined, they created an unstable intermediate that immediately broke apart into three into two three carbon molecules called PGA or phosphoglycerate. This type of carbon fixation where carbon is picked up here by RUBP and fixed into a molecule of PGA or three carbon molecule, it, it, these plants that do this are called uh, C3 plants because the first stable intermediate has three carbon. Let's look at the structure of a leaf to see when this might be a problem. When we look at a leaf we see that we have an upper epidermis the middle layer, the mesophyll, where all the photosynthesis is going to occur, and, and a lower layer of epidermis. But at the top of this epidermis, plants produce a waxy coating called a cuticle. Now the benefit of this cuticle is that it helps prevent water loss from the leaves. Water has a hard time uh, diffusing out across this waxy layer, so it helps the leaf keep their moisture in. And that's a good thing. But the downside is that the gases that we need for photosynthesis, the carbon dioxide that we got to get from the air, has trouble getting through this waxy layer also. So the carbon dioxide can't get in. Conversely, the oxygen that's produced as a byproduct of the light reactions has a hard time getting out. It can't get through this layer either. So while the waxy cuticle is a benefit on one hand, uh, it gets in the way on the other hand. So what's the solution? The solution of the stomata these openings on the undersides of the leaves that can allow for the gases to be exchanged so the carbon dioxide can or sorry the oxygen can diffuse out and carbon dioxide can diffuse in and that's a good thing but the bad thing is even though uh, we're letting the gases exchange we're also going to lose water through the stomata and that's just the uh, uh, the the cost of doing business. You know, we're not losing a lot of water across the surface, but we will lose water uh, out of these stomata. And that becomes a problem in places where the uh, conditions are very hot and dry. So as a positive, the stomata allow for gases to exchange, but on the downside, it allows for water loss. So how do plants reduce this water loss? Well, one thing that they do is they close the stomata at night. And they also can close the stomata during the day at times uh, where there's under heat stress. And so while the stomata are closed, something interesting happens. Let's start here with this as our starting condition. Notice we have a lot of carbon dioxide in the leaf that's uh, moved in before we close the stomata. But now it's just gotten too hot. We've been losing too much water, so the plant decides to shut it down. The stomata close, trapping these gases inside. Now, as photosynthesis progresses, we're going to consume carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. And so the composition of the air inside the leaf is going to change. As photosynthesis continues to progress, the levels of O2 are going to keep rising and the levels of carbon dioxide keep going down. So the question is, why is that a problem? Well, let's look back at carbon fixation. In the Calvin cycle, RUBP picks up carbon dioxide, but RUBP in a different environment where there's a lot of oxygen and not a lot of carbon dioxide, RUBP is not so picky. RUBP will combine just as readily with oxygen as it will with carbon dioxide. So instead of carbon fixation going on, we have a term, a process called photorespiration. And photorespiration is when RUBP binds to the oxygen instead of the carbon dioxide. Now, this can, can drastically decrease the rate of, um, whoops, not respiration, of photosynthesis. Hold on, let's fix that. And here we go. If this occurs, this photorespiration, the rate of photosynthesis is going to drastically decline because RUBPs are bound to oxygen and are not available to bind to the carbon dioxide. And this can create a problem in many climates where the temperature is really hot and the air is really dry. So we need alternative mechanisms for carbon fixation. Specifically, C, we're going to talk about C4 and CAM plants. Let's start with a look at the C4 pathway. Now the way to understand the C4 pathway is we have to understand that uh, the C4 pathway relies on a very unique anatomical difference to ensure an optimal carbon fixation. Well, what do we mean by that? Let's look at a typical C3 leaf. We see uh, the air spaces in here, the stomata and the air, and we see our mesophyll cells, and all of these cells have access to this air, access to any carbon dioxide and oxygen that may be in here. 
But when we compare that to a C4 plant, we see a very different anatomy. In the C4 plant, we have a layer of mesophyll cells that wrap around a layer of cells called the bundle sheath cells. Let me grab a pen here. These, let's see, these bundle sheath cells that are here and surrounding them is, I'm going to grab a different color, uh, these mesophyll cells. So we have this very unique anatomy. And in the middle of the bundle sheath cells are our vascular tissue, our xylem phloem that bring water up to the leaf and take the sugars away. So this difference in anatomy is going to be responsible for allowing what we're about to see happen. Let's take a closer look. In the C4 pathway, we're going to fix carbon twice, meaning we're going to grab carbon dioxide two different times. First, in the mesophyll cells out here, and second, in the bundle sheath cells. And in doing so, the C4 pathway is going to keep oxygen away from RUBP. So remember, RUBP binds with carbon dioxide to fix it, but in an in environment where there's lots of oxygen, we get photorespiration. So our solution to this is to not use RUBP. For carbon fixation in the mesophyll and the C4 pathway, we use a different molecule called PEP. PEP, notice that PEP will ignore the oxygen and go right to the carbon dioxide. PEP is more discriminant, it's picky. PEP, or phenylenolpyruvate, will bind to carbon dioxide but not to oxygen. So in the mesophyll cells, PEP will bind with carbon dioxide and convert to a molecule called oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is a four carbon molecule, four carbons, C4. The first intermediate made when we first fix carbon dioxide is a four carbon molecule in the C4 pathway. Let's look at it a little differently. Here we have a diagram showing a little bit of the anatomy and also a pathway. So here's our airspace inside the leaf. Here's our layer of mesophyll cells, underneath which are the bundle sheath cells, and underneath that we have our vascular bundle. So that's the anatomy. And notice the situation. We have lots of oxygen and only a little bit of carbon dioxide. So when oxygen diffuses in here, PEP ignores it. It doesn't bond, so uh, it doesn't get picked up. But carbon dioxide, PEP has an affinity for, so it will bond. So when carbon dioxide diffuses in and gets picked up by PEP, we form oxaloacetate, C4. Then the oxaloacetate is converted to malate, another four carbon molecule. And here's where things get interesting. This malate diffuses out of the chlorophyll, out of the chloroplast, out of the mesophyll cell, and into a bundle sheath cell. And when it does, it splits into a molecule of carbon dioxide and a molecule of pyruvate. And waiting right there to pick up that carbon dioxide is RUBP. And it binds to carbon dioxide, fixing it a second time, and kicks it right into the Calvin cycle that we learned in our last video. The Calvin cycle, of course, I left out the details here, is going to produce a sugar, or the precursor of sugar, which then diffuses in the vascular bundle and can get shipped to all parts of the plant. If we come back up here, the pyruvate that we have here diffuses back into the mesophyll cells and with a little help from ATP gets converted back to PEP. So look at what's happening here. This top cell, we have two different cells involved in one metabolic pathway. The C4 pathway basically is a selective carbon dioxide pump. Even though there's a lot of oxygen and only a very little bit of carbon dioxide, it's going to ensure that that little bit of carbon dioxide that's here gets to the Calvin cycle and it keeps oxygen away from RUBP and it keeps photorespiration from occurring. Now you're going to have to go back over this and really look at the anatomy uh, and get the steps of this as it's not something that's pretty that's straightforward but take a look at how this picture relates to, let me back up here, to this picture and see if we can see where things are happening. And I'm going to grab a pen here. Um, let's see. So that first carbon fixation occurs here when carbon dioxide gets picked up by PEP in the mesophyll cells. Eventually we drop the carbon dioxide off here where it gets fixed a second time by RUBP. My pen's not working very well. 
And now let's take a quick look at cam plants. We're not going to spend much time here, but cam plants uh, have evolved uh, an additional or uh, another pathway to fix carbon. And it's been in response to plants that face a, 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 also um, very hot, dry conditions. So these plants, they keep their stomata closed during the day always. It's not just a sometimes thing. They're never going to have the stomata open during the day. Uh, and um, that's going to reduce water loss. But the problem is that really limits how they can photosynthesize because it's during the day that the light's out. So what the cam plants do is that during the night, they collect carbon dioxide. They fix it and store it. Fixed by PEP, like C4 plants, and stored as malate. Then, during the daytime, they shut the stomata and convert the malate back to CO2 and begin the Calvin cycle. So they do photosynthesis in it in two stages. And here we can see a comparison of C3 or C4 and cam plants. Notice the cam plants do not involve two different cells. They don't rely on this unique anatomy. They rely on a unique uh, metabolic pathway. They just um, have different enzymes involved in this process, but it's similar. Uh, it's similar. Okay, so that does it on our video series on photosynthesis. Um, please go back and review all the videos, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.